Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. Come, my heart says, seek his face. Your face, Lord, do I seek. Do not hide your face from me. You who have been my help, do not turn your servant away in anger. Do not cast me off. Do not forsake me, O God of my salvation. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Welcome to worship this morning on the seventh Sunday of Easter, our seventh week of celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In this, today's gospel reading, we hear Jesus praying for his apostles, his disciples, praying for us across the centuries, that we might be one and united in him. Um, the slide should guide you through your participation this morning, and I invite you to stand as you're able. We'll begin with thanksgiving for baptism. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. We thank you, O God. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We bless you, O God. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. We praise you, O God. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom then shall I be afraid? When evildoers came upon me to eat up my flesh, it was they, my foes and my adversaries, who stumbled and fell. Though an army should encamp against me, Yet my heart shall not be afraid. And though war should rise up against me, yet will I put my trust in him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. Power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and blessing and glory are his. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation. Blessing and honor and glory and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. For the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious and glorious God, you have chosen us as your own, and by the powerful name of Christ, you protect us from evil. By your spirit, transform us in your beloved world, that we may find our joy in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. 
Amen. Please be seated for a musical offering. We have a video from the 180. first lesson is from Acts chapter 1. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers, together the crowd numbered about 120 persons, and said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit, through David, foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us, and was allotted his share of this ministry. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, 
one of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed two, Joseph called Barsabbas, who was also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell to Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. The word of the Lord. Let us read Psalm 1 responsively. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. Our second reading is from 1 John chapter 5, beginning with verse 9. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God, that he has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing the testimony that God has given concerning his Son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and, his li- and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you're able for the gospel acclamation. Alleluia. Alleluia. God is king over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. Alleluia. I will not leave you orphaned, says the Lord. I am coming to you. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus prayed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf, I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. Now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in them. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. 
and for their sakes I sanctify myself so that they also may be sanctified in truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Have any of you done traveling out of the country to distant foreign lands, South America, Europe, maybe Asia or Africa? I recall, it's almost 20 years ago now, uh, waking up one morning when I was in Tanzania, going off some distance as I often, do, as I often did for, for morning prayers, and sitting there kind of as the sun rose. And in that moment, recognizing how much I was in a foreign place, how much I was out of my own place. Here I was in Tanzania at, uh, at daybreak, the sights were different, the sounds were different, the animals were all different, the people were different in some ways, the language was certainly different, the food was different, even the smells of the earth were different. I was out of place, and yet I was completely present and there. Maybe you've had a similar experience if you've traveled, if you've gone to a foreign country where you're there as a visitor, you know you're a visitor, you've maybe even immersed yourself in some ways, but you are never quite all the way there. This is not your place. It is not your land. It is not your language or your food. That is what Jesus prays for us to be like in the world today. We hear this, this section from Jesus' prayer for his apostles on the night when he's arrested and taken to be crucified. We overhear his prayer to the Father. And there's a lot of confusing things that go on here. But one of the things that, that arises from this prayer is this notion that the apostles, the disciples, we who are the disciples of the 21st century are meant to be in the world, but not of the world. You've probably heard that phrase before. It comes from this kind of passage. In the world, but not of the world. As I looked around me and took in that setting, as I sat under a tree on a hillside in Tanzania, I recognized that I was in Tanzania, but not of Tanzania. I was in Africa, but not of Africa. And here, today, we should, should wrestle with finding that same feeling of being in the world, but not of the world. For the gospel that is proclaimed to us, the good news that is declared to us, the Holy Spirit that is poured out upon us, makes us somehow different. Now, as we hear about in the world, but not of the world, Jesus talking about we're from the world, um, but I, I've sent them into the world, and I've not asked to take them out of the world, but they don't belong to the world, all of these things in our readings today. We should be reminded of a much earlier passage in John's Gospel, another very familiar passage. God so loved the world. While we may be in the world but not of the world, it does not mean that God does not love the world. God does not desire the world. God does not want the world. God loves the world so much that he has sent Jesus Christ to bring about its redemption and its sanctification, its complete reception by God. But in this context, Jesus speaks about the world as that state of estrangement from God, that separation from God, a place of separation from God's holiness, God's sanctification, all the fullness of God's grace. That's how we understand the world here. What is not yet fully redeemed, not yet fully made new, as God's desire is. But God's desire is real. Even as God's desire for us is real, even though we sometimes find ourselves very comfortable in the world. We just like to kind of be like everything else that is here, even though it involves brokenness, fallenness, and sorrow. 
But the gospel that is proclaimed to you is that you have been made a member of the kingdom of God today, here and now. You have eternal life here and now. You've not received the fullness of God's promises, but you are adopted children of God, inheritors of all that Jesus has won for you on the cross. That the treasures of the world, the things that attract us here, the, the things that we think that we need to be a part of are just an illusion that will pass away for God will make all things new in Jesus Christ we're not taken out of this place. We're not taken out of the world in which we live. We do not belong to the world, Jesus says, because we have been claimed by God through baptism and through the work of the Holy Spirit, but rather we have been sent into the world that God loves to proclaim a truth about God's love, the truth about eternal life, the truth about redemption and sanctification and grace the world that God loves, whether that is the the nature in the park down the street or the neighbor across the street from where you live, need to know God's love. Need to know that there is more than just getting through one day to the next. That there is life in Christ and eternal life from God. There is everlasting life after death that there is meaning in suffering as it is connected to the suffering of Christ on the cross. And the world will not know unless that truth comes to the world and that truth comes through us who are set. Jesus said, you do not belong to the world just as I do not belong to the world. Jesus prays to the Father, as you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world, so that the truth of God's love and mercy and grace in Jesus Christ might be made known. If you find yourself too comfortable in the world, you find yourself too comfortable where you are, if you forget that discontent that the Word of God brings to you, If you forget the mission that you are sent on, hear Jesus say again, you are in the world, but not of the world. God loves the world. You have been sent to make that known. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Please stand as you're able. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen in you. Alleluia. The peace of Christ be with you always. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Holy God, in Christ Jesus, the joy of the church is made complete. Root the church in your word. Unify us as Christ's body. Send us into the world as your loving people, ready to testify to your spirit at work. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Mighty God, the world is your handiwork, displaying the wonders of your creation. Seas teem with life, forests reach up to praise you, and life grows forth from the soil. Guard and keep this world for the well-being of all your creatures. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Gracious Sovereign, those who follow your ways are like trees planted near streams of water. Establish the leaders of nations and all in authority in your grace and truth. Strengthen them, so that the people they serve will have abundant life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Generous Savior, you befriend those who are sick, suffering, poor, lonely, outcast, rejected, or, or ill. Grant healing and love to all in need. We pray especially for Lori, John, Janet, Myrna, Kim, Sandy, Roger, Megan, Vi, Judith, Bob, Dale, Drew, Carlene, Jody, Catherine, Ruth, Kim, Ada, Terry, Judy, Jean, Carl, Lorraine, Virginia, Bill, Roseanne, Carol, Jennifer, all those affected by COVID-19, and those who name now silently or loud. Give them tangible signs of your steadfast love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Creator God, here in this community, we share the gift of praying, learning, and supporting one another. Give us thankful hearts as we claim the gifts that are unique to us and keep us from being envious of others with different gifts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Saving God, your wonderful promise is the gift of eternal life in Jesus. Through the witness of those who have died in you, strengthen us now in this gift of life. We cherish the memory of your saints. 
Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Ask and it will be given you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives. And everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for bread, will give a stone? Or if the child asks for a fish, will give a snake. If then, if you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Alleluia. Alleluia. Let us pray. Come, risen Lord Jesus. Help us with one accord to devote ourselves to prayer. In this, your upper room, abide with us. And in your glorious presence, give us life. Receive our various gifts as one song of praise. And keep us one as you are one, with the Father and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and at all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who after his resurrection appeared openly to his disciples and in their sight was taken up into heaven, that he might make us partakers of his divine nature. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me.
With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us and send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ invites us to receive from this table, eat and be satisfied. Thanks be to God. Please be seated as we recite the Lamb of God. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace.
Please stand as you're able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Now our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is at unity with itself, to which the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, the assembly of Israel, to praise the name of the Lord. For there are the thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls and quietness within your towers. For my brethren and companions' sake, I pray for your prosperity. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek to do you good. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, giver of love and power, your Son Jesus Christ has sent us into all the world to preach the gospel of his kingdom. Confirm us in this mission and help us to live the good news we proclaim through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated for some brief announcements this morning. Let's see, I think Greg wants, I'll let you start off, Greg. Good morning. This is uh, different, standing up here again. It's been over a year, so yeah. it's a good feeling. Um, <clears throat> I just, uh, first of all, I wanted to uh, wish Pastor Bond a belated happy birthday. Thank it was you. his birthday yesterday. Um, it's good that we're starting to open up the city and the country again with vaccinations and everything and that's great and um, so with that I'm going to segue into this um, the city of Janesville is going to be hosting the Janesville Town Square Grand Prix it's an annual stop of the tour of American's Dairyland Pro Cycling and it's running for two days next month and why do I bring this up to you? Um, it's a great way because it is in downtown Janesville. We have a parking lot across the street that we can use for a uh, uh, way of raising some funds. We've done it in the past, and uh, I'm hoping that I can get enough volunteers to help out. It only takes two people to work it um, and if we had enough volunteers, you'd only have to do a couple hours or as long as you want to, actually. But um, so I would ask if anybody can volunteer to let the church know, and um, I'll talk to them more about it. It's uh, going to be advertised in the program that the, uh, the cycling does in the, the last two uh, year or two times that we've had it in Janesville, I didn't get our name in in time for them to mention our church as a place for uh, parking for cyclists or spectators. So uh, it's gonna be in there this year and hopefully we get a good turnout. Uh, but please, uh, Think about it. Um, what are the dates again? Oh, I'm sorry, 17th and 18th of June. June. Yep. It's and a, so 
Thursday and Friday. Yep. We'll have a tent set up so you don't have to sit out under the broiling sun and have some I'm drinks there. I'm hoping that we do have a tent set up. I'll at least bring my tent by tent. We'll, we'll keep moving into the shade yeah, if we okay. have to. Yes, uh, there'll be a, a tent, and it'll be outside, so you won't have to worry about um, being too close to each other because it'll be all open air. Yep. And, and so uh, I hope you consider helping out. Thank, Thank you. you. Yep, call the church office, and uh, we'll answer any more questions you may have. But, uh, do consider that. It's a nice, nice way to kind of do fellowship and participate in our fundraiser. I just want to say happy birthday to Pastor Bon, belated. And no, he has not lost weight. He just got shaved. But it looks like he lost weight. Lost weight. <laughs> Ten, years he Ten years younger. All right, that's good. I just wanted to. I just wanted to briefly touch base. I know that this week there were some changes in uh, with the CDC, right, and those types of things that are out there. So uh, Tuesday we'll have a council meeting. We're just going to address the the current situation, what we feel is best for all. It's not a fun topic, but I think it'll be a topic that we address so we help get some of those questions answered and updated. So again, the council, council appreciates all the input that we've heard um, from any of those folks out there, but we will just update so that there's no questions because I know that there has been some this morning. So once the council gets a chance to look at some of those things and and uh, we'll make sure that you understand. But for now, it's all business as usual with our masks and, and the way that we approach service. So I just want to let you know we, we are aware of the topic and we will be addressing it and, and update you soon. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Uh, and you mentioned what I was going to mention. Council meeting this Tuesday, uh, 6.30, as it's printed in the yellow page. Um, also, please note that the midweek worship service is beginning this week, Wednesday, on Wednesday at 11 o'clock. So a new time in the day for our midweek worship service. Next Sunday is the 50th day after Easter, Pentecost Day. So I invite you to decorate the church. And, and you are the church with red. So find something red to wear, something fun to wear uh, as we celebrate Pentecost next week. Um, other things, I'll, I'll let you take a note of those. The last meeting of our Praying the Catechism is this coming Thursday, no, sorry, Wednesday night, Wednesday night, um, as it's printed there. Any final announcements? So after the dismissal and after the, the brief uh, postlude, uh, those who would like to remain seated uh, or s remain in the sanctuary are invited to sing, Christ is Alive, let Christians sing. Now, I, I've forgot that we did this two weeks ago, but that's okay, it's a wonderful Easter song. So uh, we'll sing those five verses again this week as we did uh, two weeks ago. Um, if you don't want to sing, just depart out and enjoy the, the sunshine that has arrived. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. Go in peace, share the good news. Thanks be to God, alleluia.